So I want to begin this by, you know, stating something for the record uh, that those of you who've been following me for a while know, uh, but I don't like racism. Uh, that's a bold stance right there that nobody else holds for sure. But I feel the need to get it out there because the subject of today's blah blah involves racism, right? And the general thing that I want you guys to remember is every single video I've put out against smart devices, against the 5G infrastructure they're building, against the AI super state, against all of these technological advancements designed to make your life easier. Um, and I want you to remember that uh, when I uh, talk about this story. Now, full disclosure, you know, I'm not the first person to talk about this. I heard about this, um, and it was independently verified by uh, Lewis Rossman, and I greatly respect him. I hope anyone who follows me but somehow doesn't also follow him goes and subscribes to his channel. But... Effectively, uh, I've been speaking out against this sort of technocratic dystopia for a while, and this fits right the fuck in. Um, you know, wh while, <laughs> while the elites are distracting us with divide-and-conquer agendas, they're slowly intruding on our lives. They're slowly putting more of their devices in, putting more of their programming in. AI and technology and all of this stuff slowly killing privacy, slowly killing freedom, slowly, you know, destroying your ability to even live peaceably in your home. Even if you didn't do anything wrong, if it suspects you did something wrong, the smart device will now turn off. And such happened with um, <laughs> a man who... Uh, posted his, his, his poor experience here to Medium called Brandon Jackson. And he's on Medium talking about how his Amazon smart home, like where everything was connected to Alexa, um, locked him out because a delivery driver reported, and like, I mean, locked him out of his devices, like not his physical home as far as I'm aware, but like his devices, which... Included the lights, included all this stuff, leaving him in the dark for a bit. Um, and all of these other, you know, fucking ridiculous. So, basically, the delivery driver said that through his doorbell, he committed acts of racism. His ring doorbell, which apparently he doesn't even have. But, um, this, 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 this delivery driver reported that, and his Amazon account was suspended which shut him out of all his devices. Regardless of whether or not it was true, they immediately believed the delivery driver and shut his house down. Now, again, I'm no fan of racism, right? And I've spoken out against that so many fucking times. I don't need to get into that part. Um, any of you who need convincing of that uh, either need to watch my episodes here, or you need to, like, you know, remove whatever is in the way of your brain and your thoughts. Because there's something in betwixt there that is blocking you from believing that I would be, like, you know, anti-racist after all of my anti-racist programming. But, like, let me be completely clear here. This is an anti-centralization vlog. And anyone worth their salt should be listening to the anti-centralization message because if this guy, who didn't even commit an act of racism, can be accused of it, have his account shut down and have his devices, um, you know, lock him out, then it could happen to a leftist protester. It could happen to somebody who protested the digital fence I talked about in my other video. It could happen to an anti-war protester. It could happen to somebody who, you know, did took the wrong side with BDS. It could happen with somebody who took the wrong side in, you know, any number of, of like, government-approved issues, right? You, you spoke too much against our corporate fascism, and now our corporate fascist devices are going to shut you out of your house. 
so let me just read the story um, from 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 the top here. Um, Brandon Jackson says this is a tale of unwanted disruption. My week without Amazon. On Wednesday, May 31st, 2023, I finally regained access to my Amazon account after an unexpected and unwarranted lockout that lasted nearly a week, from Thursday, May 25th. This wasn't just a simple inconvenience, though. I have a smart home, and my primary means of interfacing with all the devices and automations is through Amazon Echo devices via Alexa. The incident left me with a house full of unresponsive devices, a silent Alexa, and a lot of questions. And he, uh, he's sure to clarify when he shares the video update. I've shared this with Lewis Rossman. I shared with him the videos and emails, and he verified this really did happen. I don't really want to dox myself if I can help it. Link to his video. Uh, unpacking the cause. So he starts to go into what, uh, what, what, the, what the cause of this was, what the alleged cause was. And uh, let, me, let me just start here. The sequence of events that led to this digital exile began innocuously enough. A package was delivered to my house on Wednesday, May 24th, and everything seemed fine. The following day, however, I found that my Echo Show had signed out and I was unable to interact with my smart home devices. My initial assumption was that someone might have attempted to access my account repeatedly, triggering a lockout. I use a fairly old email address for my Amazon account, and it's plausible that an old password might have been exposed in a past data breach. However, I currently use strong auto-generated passwords via Apple and employ two-factor authentication with an authenticator app, so unauthorized access seemed unlikely. I swiftly checked my other accounts, social media, streaming apps, etc., to ensure I hadn't been compromised. All seemed normal with no flood of notifications from Microsoft Authenticator that would indicate an attempted breach. Puzzled, I followed the advice of the Amazon app and dialed the customer service number it provided. That's when things began to take a surreal turn. An unexpected accusation. The representative told me I should have received an email, which I indeed found in my inbox. It was from an executive at Amazon. As I dialed the number provided in the email, I half wondered if Amazon was experiencing some issues and I was unwittingly falling into a scam. <laughs> when I connected, because they'll, they'll do that a lot. They'll send some bullshit message to you and say, you know, hey, this number, this number right here, call this number. When I connected with the executive, they asked if I knew why my account had been locked. When I answered, I was unsure. Their tone turned somewhat accusatory. I was told that the driver who had delivered my package reported receiving racist remarks from my ring doorbell. It's actually a, a Eufy, but I'll let it slide. Addressing the problem, here's where things got even more baffling. First, I have multiple cameras recording everything that happens on my property. If the driver's claims were accurate, I could easily verify them with video footage. Second, most delivery drivers in my area share the same race as me and my family. It seemed highly unlikely that we would make such remarks. Finally, when I asked what time the alleged incident occurred, I realized it was practically impossible for anyone in the house to have made the comments as nobody was home around that time, approximately 6.05. I reviewed the footage and confirmed that no such comments had been made. Instead, the Yuffie doorbell had issued an automated response. Excuse me, can I help you? The driver, who was walking away and wearing headphones, must have misinterpreted the message. Nevertheless, by the following day, my Amazon account was locked and all my Echo devices were logged out. Let me be clear, I fully support Amazon taking measures to ensure the safety of their drivers. However... I question when my entire smart home system had, been, had to be rendered unusable during the internal investigation. It seems more sensible to impose a temporary delivery restriction on a purchase. It seems more sensible to impose a temporary delivery restriction or purchasing ban on my account. Submitting a video evidence from multiple angles right after my initial call with the executive appeared to have little impact on their decision. To disable my account. The fallout. This incident has led me to question my relationship with Amazon. After nearly a decade of loyalty, I've been giving, given a harsh, 
After nearly a decade of loyalty, I've been given a harsh reminder that a misunderstanding can lead to such drastic measures. It seems more reasonable to handle such issues in a more compartmentalized way, rather than a blanket shutdown of all services. Due to this experience, I am seriously considering discontinuing my use of Amazon Echo devices and I will caution others about this incident. This ordeal has made a case for a more personalized home assistant system, perhaps using Raspberry Pi devices scattered around the house. The resolution. Despite promptly submitting video evidence immediately upon learning of the issue, my account remained locked. The timing couldn't have been worse. The onset of Labor Day weekend was approaching, and I was keen to resolve the issue before the long weekend. However, despite numerous calls and emails, it wasn't until Friday afternoon that I received confirmation that the investigation had started. I was told to expect a response within two business days, meaning not until Tuesday of the following week at the earliest. In the end, my account was unlocked on Wednesday, with no follow-up email to inform me of the resolution. This incident stands as a stark reminder of the need for better customer service and a more nuanced approach to incident management. Through sharing my experience, I hope to encourage Amazon to reform and rethink their approach to handling such as in the future. It's essential for customers to feel confident in the security and reliability of their services, especially when those services are integral to the functionality of their homes. It's time for Amazon to take a more customer-focused approach to problem-solving and conflict resolution. And he also went update. For those saying, I'm okay with this happening to a real racist, I'm not. If someone brought, bought and paid for a device, they should be able to use it at least on their own property if it doesn't hurt anybody. I'm only pushing this story so that this won't happen to anyone else. Regardless of their race, religion, beliefs, if you paid for it, you should own it. And he also said, I was not truly in the dark for a week. My smart home runs mostly locally, and, Am and Alexa is really just a polymorphic interface. I was just able to use Siri. Though, out of habit, I'd sometimes say Alexa, only for her to remind me how stupid I was. So, I, I need to bring this up. If somebody has all these devices in their house that can be, like, remotely turned off to begin with, yeah, that's a fucking problem anyway. And it was a problem before this guy put this thing out. It's a problem I've been talking about and speaking out against for a long fucking time now. But, you know, this is a good reminder that this is not an odd case. That this is not some outlier thing that will never happen again. Because you're trusting mega corporations with huge aspects of your life. And even more and even more and even more of them. I've had so many opportunities to get, like, a free Alexa or a Google Dot or whatever. And no. No thank you. No fucking thank you. Because that's what you get with these things. You get Orwellian, like, mega corporate government-aligned devices in your home that can control aspects of your life. That's a problem. That's a significant problem. And it's a problem that, like is increasingly there. I mean, Apple is selling, like, this translucent headf headphone thing with, like, a screen on the other side so you can see somebody's eyes. That's not an unnecessary trait. Um, they, they, they have this fucking device, right? That you, you put it on your head and you can use your computer anywhere. Which basically means that, like, <laughs> you've got... No fucking proper office hygiene, no sleep hygiene, just watch movies anywhere, work anywhere, feel like you're anywhere. Instead of, like, having a dedicated room for your office, you can now make any room your office. Just consistently live in the cloud, consistently live in devices, consistently live in our pre-manufactured and mediated realities. Do what we say, and if you don't, we'll turn off your devices. This is evil. Like, yeah, you know, I don't particularly care about racists, right? But at the same time, even those people bought these devices. And if Amazon really cared about avoiding racism, perhaps they would stop using conflict minerals 
and the like third world developing nations that are running a huge amount of sweatshops that push product through their fucking site. But they don't care about racism if it helps them. They don't care about racism. And uh, hey, editor Jeremiah here, because uh, yeah, I uh, recorded this yesterday, um, and I decided that it wouldn't get the traction I wanted uh, if I edited and released it uh, yesterday, because I recorded it kind of late. So uh, I'll just go over this today, because I might as well also go over the fact that um, Amazon Web Services went down, and I used it as an opportunity to talk about these things, that uh, you know, they, they took tens of billions of dollars to help the NSA spy on you. They have a dedicated cloud computing region for the CIA, has contracts with every branch of the U.S. military, and much more, just so y'all know. And then I also went over the fact that, you know, yeah, this is the problem with the Internet. So much of it is just directly connected to the state especially CDNs and the cloud, and they want AI in control of much of it. They've built that for years. So when one of these goes down, widespread outages. Centralization is bad, yo. Uh, also, just to stir things up, the NSA was originally started primarily to oppose Middle Eastern terror, and now that they lost pretty much all of that excuse, and that's what it always was, it was an excuse, because fucking they made the terrorists, as we have gone over, over and over. Um, and, you know, <laughs> that they lost pretty much all of that excuse. It's still here for some reason. The CIA was allegedly started primarily to oppose Russia and communism. Still here. Uh, somehow, when they start up these organizations to oppose some boogeyman, the thing they end up doing most is violating your liberty and spreading American empire, almost like communism was never the problem and neither was terror, almost like it's profitable or something. And and while I'm at it, I might as well also add that if you haven't seen my video on uh, Hitler's favorite museum uh, exhibit, feel free to go watch that because... Uh, they're, you know, building up a fascist uh, empire right now in the name of eradicating a minority, and uh, you can bet that any institution that's started up now in order to deal with this problem now will stick around and fuck over your liberty, because history repeats and these institutions consistently get roots to deal with some problem, um, and then these problems that they're dealing with, allegedly... Uh, they somehow never get solved, or at least they never get solved so much that the organization collapses, goes away. So when, you know, the conservatives get their fucking Bureau of Morality that says you can't be a certain, you know, whatever, um, you know, it's gonna stick around and it's gonna bite you in the ass, um, especially since it's reliable that the kind of person uh, that these organizations, fascist organizations, would have historically considered degenerate. Uh, that's generally the kind of person posting about how great a far-right regime would be now. It's kind of ironic. And hey, Amazon, if you actually care about stopping racism, stop the single greatest sources of racism, which are the military and prison industrial complexes, by stopping enabling those by giving them huge contracts. How about fucking that? How about you stop that racism, hmm? Uh, nah, you're not gonna. It's too profitable to be racist. Ah, fuck. That's, uh, that's a damn shame. Anyway, back to the fucking normal video here. Uh, lights change. Uh, you know, anti-LGBT bigotry. They don't care about any of this shit if it helps them. They won't even be good enough to their workers that they didn't have to unionize. So, I'm saying that these corporations do not give a fuck about black people, just like George W. Bush, or, you know, anyone else for that matter, and you should not be entrusting them with the authority of what your devices do. And I thought I would give you this little intermediary message, uh, because there's more content coming, and there's going to be more uh, tomorrow, but I needed to get something out today, and I'm going to, and this is exactly in line with everything I've been talking about. And by the way, more content against the AI super state a little bit later this week because it's getting fucking bad.
Some people would like you to focus on trans people instead, and those people are pieces of shit. Um, some people would rather you focus on, you know, UFOs, and those people are pieces of shit. The media will dangle this UFO thing like uh, keys in front of a baby, and so many people are lapping it up right now, but, r like... You should be much more concerned about the, the objects in your home than some unidentified flying one. Because these things are fucking evil. And, if I'm right, they will eventually be connected to the mark of the motherfucking beast. We are coming into terrible times, folks. This is not good. And I just needed to push something out today. I needed to, you know, remind y'all that we are slowly giving more and more of ourselves to this state. That chat GPT and all these fucking like new inventions to get us to program our enslavement is exactly doing that. And I wasn't exaggerating. And here's a prime and perfect fucking example. Living in a smart home is some of the least smart shit you can do, yo. Don't do it. And if you do... Do it with third-party devices, just like Lewis Rossman talked about in his video. I'll link that in the description. But anyway, like, share, and subscribe, and smash the fucking state.